to the side. Talk to him. Talk to him. Come on, Leaf. I'ma make my mom smile cause she cried too much I'ma tell Leah the truth cause I lied too much I miss the guys, I be talking to the sky too much I be really trying murder, they behind too much I really be asking God, what did I do to deserve this? He never responded to me, but they said he heard us Is we automatically going to hell for the murders? We stick together, you think it matter who get the furthest? Talk to Lord Reek like how you leaving, you ain't let me know I had a detainer, I thought they'd never let me go I was trapped in my own way wouldn't let me grow uh, Niggas favorite line is If you need something Let me know I done seen gangsters Turn rash I could've cried I done seen niggas Tell a judge truth He could've lied We don't squash beef When niggas got shot He could've died Me and Reap was full of pride We could've put it to the side And one thing I never ever did Was need niggas I'm still in the hood How the fuck I lead niggas And I never speak about it When I feed niggas I should've listened When my mom said She read niggas I ain't letting money compromise, nothing that I stand for You ain't moving out for reek, what you on the land for? Arguing with God, why the fuck you take my man for? Cut a lot of niggas off, now I just got a handful Used to put our mattress on the crate, we used this ball course I ain't really got no plan B, so I can't fall short I be shooting, pitching in that field, I play all sports If you hit, you hit him back, that's what we was all took Then it went to guns, mine started losing sons I ain't getting no pay stub, I was taking niggas funds I really been through the worst, I put all my my niggas first. I was trying to put them on, he trying to put me in the hearse. I can hear a job voice when the wind blowing. I ain't speak on the envy, but it been showing. Since I broke through that concrete, I been growing. That nigga been plotting on me, and you been knowing. They gon' try to bury us, but we gon' break through We got everything we need, we gon' make do It's gon' fuck you over when your dog snake you When killers follow protocol, I tell them take two Right. When you leave your home, it be you against the world They could come up on the chicken, niggas won't give you a squirrel I seen a nigga catch oh, his first time inside an earl Said I was a little boy, I was selling my little girl That's Leaf Ward right there Listen man, that's Leaf Ward man Breakthrough, you're now tuned into Me, 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 me Million dollars worth of game, I'm Wilder 267 This right here, Gilly the Mutt That's, yeah, Gilly the Mutt, not the net I remixed it on you, cause you will be a mutt You be a chihuahua in a pit bull mix So you just don't know what you wanna be Tough, soft, barking, always loud So it's a mix up, right there, Mirrors John Right there, and listen, that's how we that's how we giving it to him. Me and I was every game Talking presented you. by Barstool You look like Sports. Officer Tackle, nigga Yeah, it was whatever, man Yeah, it was whatever yeah, with me, nigga. man Fuck is you talking about Gilly the Mutt you, you'd be wild you. the smut. I killed you like That's that. what you would be. I killed you. You would be on the I ground with you. some tights on, shaking your killed ass you. from the back. Wild the smut. Killed you. Um, pop that pussy, doo doo brown. I wanna rock, I wanna rock, I wanna. Look at him, look at him, look at him. No, 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 look at no, him. Like like that, he went right, right, right in the shaking yeah. his bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Get the bottom like this. Dude, I, I can see you DJing in a club called Happy Bottoms. No, no, that ain't me. That's you. You in there fucking it up. I can see you and Pop doing security at the joint. Oh, we got a gun! Uh, y'all no. frisky dudes and all that stuff. I see y'all. Get out of here, man. Hey, listen. Barstool. Uh, me and Oz River Game is powered by Barstool Sports. Let's get into our first sponsor. You know, our, the official sponsor of Barstool Sports. The official vodka of Barstool Sports. Amsterdam vodka. Of course, Amsterdam vodka is you know you it's smooth on a pilot you know you could drink it with anything you could dr drink it with uh juice soda you know drop a little lime a little lemon in there you can drink it like that it's 80 proof vodka made from some of the finest quality grains of america's heartland is distilled five times unparalleled smoothness filtered three times too so you can get a like christen cool finish man and it's smooth enough to drink like i said with anything the new amsterdam vodka is the official vodka of barstool sports man I, you know of course i get my cases so we always at the crib you know to to let them you know do her little smoothies with her little amsterdam vodka in there so make sure y'all uh cop up if you want to get some new amsterdam vodka of course you can go to uh barstool sports right backslash like uh game or something to that aspect i believe mm -hmm. and uh you know you get your new amsterdam vodka this is uh where is that right here? New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka for Barstool Sports. And million dollars worth of game. It was born in an uncompromising passion for great vodka. This commitment to excellence has enabled Amsterdam to produce vodka with a superb taste. And once again, an unparalleled smoothness. Get in tune. New Amsterdam. I had some of this, man. I was... 
I tore two of the ass up the other night. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, <laughs> I had, I had, a, had a glass of that. I tore two of the ass up. You hear me? Let me say this. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. This is the Million Dollars Worth of Game Mother's Day edition. Happy Mother's Day. First to you, Mary, because you're right here. Thank Happy you. Mother's Happy Day Mother's to our Day. mothers, That's our sweet. sisters, our grandmothers, our cousins, our aunt, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to you as well, Walla. You act like a woman. No, you be acting like uh, a woman yeah, in there with yeah, Gina. Yeah. I know Gina going to get your mother day pregnant. <laughs> the way you be in there bitching. Be <laughs> <laughs> Gina be like, shut up. Shut up. Stop bitching all the time. Happy Mother's Day to Lowe. He, acts like, a, he acts, like a, uh, acts like a woman a lot. You know? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so listen, man, I just want to give a special shout out. To my mom, you know, and and you know, of course, Jackie and all the moms, your mom, you know, all the moms across the across the world, man. You know what I mean? This day is definitely dedicated to y'all. You know, mothers are the foundation of the household. Moms is who are the backbone to men all across the countries. Moms are the one that hold it down for the most part. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to all the queens, man. Shout out to all the queens. All the queens all across the world, man. And to all the youngins out there who, who you know, anybody out there who's beefing with their mom, going through a little mm -hmm. something with your mother, you know, it's never that serious. You got to understand that you only get one of them, man. You, you know what I'm saying? You only get one of them. So, you know, no matter what y'all go through, whatever issues y'all might have, you only get one of them, so, you know, don't wait till it's too late to, you know, to love your mom and to get over the dumb things that y'all, the disagreements, the little, you know, petty things y'all may be going through. Because a lot of people out here don't be rocking with their moms, you know what I'm yeah. saying? They be, they be going through shit and, you know, man, life is too short, man. So if you're going through any issues with your mom, man, stop that shit today. Call her up. Tell her you love her. You know, sometimes you just got to sit there and you got to hear the shit that you don't want to hear. You got to go through the things that you don't want to go through just because it's your mom. You know, I, I know personally I got one of the craziest moms on planet fucking earth. So I know what it is sometimes to have a mom that, you know, you don't always you see don't eye to eye that. with. I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. But, you know, me and my mom ain't, you know, I said my mom a couple of dollars, she cool. I don't give a fuck what we beefing about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Money changed a lot of what, shit. What? I sent a couple hundred, she straight. <laughs> she back to loving me. So. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so if you're going to do anything with your mom, man, call it up and call her up. You know, apologize. It's not that deep, man. You can get over it. Don't wait till your mom is, you know, or you in the grave or your mom is in the grave or something go wrong to, to you know, to feel that pain and had that on your heart that you should have been, went and did that when you could do it now. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going through something with your mom, even if you're not going through something with your mom, understand that you only get one of them, so love them, so love them to death, all right? Let's get into million dollars worth of game. It seems to me that people in today's society is not really working for the long term. You know, the long term is not really is not really a thing now. Like when I started I started giving out million dollars worth of game in twenty eleven, twenty twelve. You know what I'm saying? I got a video from eight years ago with me, Meek Mills. I mean twelve years ago. So that would be two thousand and eight, right? Yeah, oh eight. Right. And I'm in the studio. It's me, it's Meek Mills, it's Black De Niro, and you know, I'm just Talking shit on the camera, and I said, "God damn, me got that much time in." Yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. man, I be I still be looking at him like he just is young, but that's crazy. No, me, you oh, gotta yeah. understand, me start popping at an early age, man, and me gotta be about thirty one, thirty two now. But God, I'm still looking at me like he's something like that, right? Me gotta yeah. be about thirty, thirty one, thirty two, something. So, yeah. you know, damn, me got that much time. It's like back then I was saying on the video, you know, I give you a million dollars worth of game for free if you need it, just holler at me. And I said, damn, I said that 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I look up and it's 12 years later and million dollars worth of game is a whole brand, it's a whole company, it's a whole movement, it's a record label, you know. And it's like, you realize that, damn, I've really put work in. You know what I'm saying? We've really put work in to make this brand something that could last a lifetime. And not something that's just here today and going tomorrow. But I, I noticed in today's society, a lot of people was all about the quick flip, the quick flip mentality. Yeah, that's a mentality. Everything is about, every, I think people look at uh, whatever we're doing, we look at it like 
society as a whole, we look at it like, I see what they doing. They making it happen. You didn't see the you didn't see the hardship. You ain't see the struggle. You ain't see the couch surfing right. none of that shit. And you like you got that you know because some of us come from that that hustle bustle from the bottom the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'll be like we want that quick flip real quick. So we looking at business even if you know starting a brand. We even if the brand is ourselves. Right. Like I need this shit by six months. Or I need mm-hmm. about four months. Or I need about ninety days. If I don't get it by then, like they you get frustrated, and they and they just try to they don't know what to do. So sometimes they start doing anything. Sometimes they give up. Sometimes they be like, fuck it, because it's like, we living in, like I said, we living in an instant, this microwave world. This shit is microwave. Absolutely. This, matter of fact, this is an air fryer world. Mm-hmm. Should be done, wham! Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I want it right now. I don't want to strategize with it. I, I might have did some illegal shit or bust some moves on an underground tip, and that shit happened. You know, underground shit happened like right now. Mm-hmm. You know, if you in the streets, you could be rich in no time if you really got a good hustle or a good angle or whatever. Mm-hmm. So some people take that mentality of what they seen in that world and try to transfer it into another world not knowing that's not, hey, you gotta put work in here. They right. want when instant. You, when, when you're changing lanes and shit. Right. Yeah, they want just instant success. Right. Like and nothing ever is instant, right? They said like, but like businesses, when you build it, it takes three years to turn a profit. Not to be a big success, right? Just to turn a profit. So then it's like, when you look at something that's 12 years from an idea and now it's a company, most people don't got that type of patience to like see something through or just to keep activating it for 12 years. Most people at, at the third year, they'd have been like, man, this ain't really, it is not a movement yet. Why? It's not working. And it's just like, you know what? You gotta, you gotta stick with it. Back in the day, they, they knew that. They would like work a job and they'd be like, oh, it's my 10th year with the company. You know, I'm moving up. And it's like, we have this, mic- you said microwave Techno- mentality. I think internet changed everything because you can see people lives too much. Yeah. And there's always this comparison of like, Oh man, they doing this, they doing that. No, and it's like, yeah, uh, Gillian Wallow, they popped off in months. No, it wasn't Gillian Wallow popping off in months. It was when I was in jail, what he was doing. Yep. It was when I came out, what I was doing. Right. Yep. And, and listen, it took years to put to put that together. That them two type of energies, them two type of engagements, them two type of attractions. Mm-hmm. And then it, so when you looking at it, you saying this shit is easy. No, it's not. Right. Mm-mm. It took him. It took me twenty years to get myself together mentally. You gotta take that in consideration mm-hmm. to be able to come out here and be a beast every day, grinding every day on these streets mm-hmm. out here making it happen. Right. And it took him all them years. You know, he, you well, gotta you just, think about it. No, you just looking at all the years of his momentum Listen, that all built the years, up. Since, listen, since, since I first told him, listen, man, you can rap, we go in the studio, what, 95, 96? He was rocking all the way to, you gotta look at all of that. The people, that, so a lot of times we just look at somebody else and be like, oh, that's easy, I could do that. Mm-hmm. And we expect yep. it to happen now. Right. We're not taking into consideration that. The work they put in. We're not yep. taking the ups and downs that he went through, the ups and downs, me going to, we're not taking that all that they have a certain mindset to be able to roll things out a certain way. Mm-hmm. We don't look at that. We but they say comparison's don't. the thief of joy. Yeah. Like yes. it will steal your joy. If you sit there and compare what you got going on in mind, and I'm like, damn, well I ain't doing shit. So. This just isn't working. But it's hard not to. When they, when you see everybody life in real time. You listen, I didn't know that this person, you you never knew that this person started a a a company or whatever about whatever brand in Houston, Texas. You didn't know about that last year. And and now they got now they got six different companies all over all over Texas. You didn't know about that at one time. And t- but technology lets you know everything with the click of it, just type it on the key or mm-hmm. on your phone. So now it's like it's always going to be pressure for everybody. A lot of people, that's hard for that people is. to not measure their life with somebody else that they see because you see so much shit and you would start coming I'm not doing shit. I work in this lousy job. I'm in the fucking way. Yep. And not understanding that you're in your own lane. You're not mm-hmm. a nobody way. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? So and things could change quick. It could change quick. I always look at that, that clip you posted of Travis <sighs> Scott and how he was like playing like a little festival and it was he like had like 20 people, people in 10, the crowd. 15 people, yeah. And I remember it was an old interview where Tupac talked about it. He said he was um doing a show while he was doing Poetic Justice. Mm-hmm. And no, not Poetic Justice. What, what was the movie? What's, no, that was Poetic Justice. It was Poetic yeah. Justice. Okay. Yeah, he said he told Janet Jackson to come. Yeah. And she came. And he said, I was so embarrassed there was three people in the crowd. He said, but then before the end of the movie wrapped, I had my album drop, this happened, the movie come out. Mm-hmm. He said, I did a show, sold out, whole, the club is sold out, you know what I mean, a couple thousand people. Mm-hmm. It could change like that when you keep going, and right. you keep, but you keep looking at you like, the people aren't feeling me yet. It's like, that could change. The like, right, like co sign sh- shout out. Everybody wasn't up on Kanye. Now look, but he keep grinding, but look how long it took. Yep. If you look, even with Tupac, everybody wasn't fucking with Tupac when he first came out, when he was a hype man for Digital Underground. Nope. When yep. he was, even, even Brenda got a baby and stuff like that was mm-hmm. big, but when, 
It took years for him to go through so much shit. Then he came to death row with all eyes on me, and then shit just exploded. Yeah. But it was all that groundwork that he put in. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand, people ain't had social back then. Right. So yeah. they ain't had a computer. And he was killing shit in real time, real time. where you had to sell an album. So it was so yeah. much, much, much more harder. Just imagine we had social media back then. He probably have sold 100 million records. Right. Maybe. Absolutely. Or, especially, or, especially with one his, personality. Yeah. his personality. Or, or it depending on the circumstances, could have folded, yeah. which some people do, fold based off of be yeah. feeling embarrassed, right? Yeah. Because people are watching, because people are watching them not um, be super successful right away. It's hard. Yeah, because yeah, it's embarrassing because you'll overthink. You will think that you will think that people is watching you and they're not even fucking watching you. Right. And you'll be like, damn, oh, I'm looking stupid out here. Nobody even paying you attention. Like a lot of times, even even with the secret stuff, like you had, people had this this imaginary hate, this imaginary people hate. We be having too much imaginary shit going on that's yeah. not really going on because right. people got bills they paying. They worrying about real life shit. Why is somebody worrying about you all the time? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And motherfuckers got to understand that the quick flip mentality is never going to lead you to long term success. Because it's an unpatient mentality. Yeah. Right. You you unpatient and you and you're never going to have the time to, and you might have some good shit. But you you know, you'll plant the seed, pour water in at one time, go in the house, as soon as the sun come out, you like, yo, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You not waiting, Dan. Let me, let me, let me wait for three more weeks. Mm -hmm. And it'd be that time right when you right when it might be ready to pop, or right when that opportunity that might become you, you, right you cause you met you you went to too many people and too many no's. You see know what I'm saying? Like somebody I heard somebody on uh Instagram say that uh no mean next opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't know who it is. You know what I mean? Oh, Shout out to whoever like said that. that. It said, no mean next opportunity. Right. Like, okay, you shot me down, but I'm going to go go here. Like I tell people, only thing you need in your life is about four or five yeses. Mm -hmm. yep. You need yes to the person that you want to be in love with, you know yep. what I'm saying, or whatever. You need yes to that move, to, 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 the ladder. Yep. That person that's going to introduce you to the ladder to put you in the game, whether it's radio, whether it's fashion, whether it's music. Yep. Okay, this was the first person I connect with. He's a manager when I... And then, you know, a couple mm -hmm. more, and they'll set you for life. Right. Yeah. All you need is, like, think about it, like five yeah. of them, and you'll be set for life, whatever you're trying to do. So I think a lot of people got to just be patient and get, get away from that quick flip mentality because you got to look at things. Don't think you could take one thing that's unorganized and turn it into something that's, that's real, that, you know what I mean, Organi this is an unorganized world. This is an anything goes world. You try to put it in the structural world. Sometimes you might can take the grind there, but certain other things that right now, it just don't happen like that in real life. Right. That's so understand real. to all to everybody out there, understand, man, that quick flip mentality is never gonna bring you long term success, man. Anything, anything that's worth having, having, you gotta work for, and you gotta work goddamn hard for it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? No matter how easy it look, we make shit look easy, but all the shit that go on behind the closed doors, y'all yeah. would y'all would be amazed. And y'all probably would respect us more if y'all, you know what I mean, if you really knew, like, damn, these niggas really put the work in. This ain't no shit where it's just, oh, this no, this not no fly by night shit. They really put the work in. So I want to talk about, you know, people being balanced. You feel what I'm saying? Just keeping a balance. You know what I'm saying? And not letting success go to their head and not letting failure go to their heart. You feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of people achieve success and then now you like, who is who is this nigga? I don't who who is this motherfucker? No, you gotta understand something. You important. know what I'm saying? Something important that I as you said, a lot of people, I can't speak on different places, but I can speak on coming out the hood. A lot of they grind be fueled by revenge. Mm -hmm. They be fueled about people shitting on me or they did me this way. So a lot of times, people is just trying to get in position to shit on you. Right. They not trying wow. to, like, 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 and then some people, they can't, wow. think about it, some people can't even, like, some people, they just trying to get in position to shit on certain people. Like, hey, I think, I believe a lot of people got lists. I done ran into people that got lists, and they tell me, yeah, motherfucker on my list. I'm like, what type of list you talking about? Oh, yeah, that motherfucker shit on me back three years ago. That motherfucker did this. And it be that mentality instead of having that. Think about it, and that could fuck you up because your moves is based off revenge or your moves is based off of proving somebody wrong or your moves is based off proving somebody. It is a, it is everything is based off somebody else. Yeah. So you can't think because it's emotional. It's, it's emotion laced. It's laced with emotion. So, you know, emotions cloud reaction. So right. as you trying to move, you ain't thinking according because your whole thing is, I got a shit on the mirror. Right. Yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah, I'm shit on that motherfucker. I'm doing. But at the same time, when you emotionally laced, you're not thinking clearly, so you're missing out on a lot of other shit. 
because my whole goal in life is to shit on you. Right. You, you know how I many people that they whole thing is they ain't been with somebody for two, three years and they still trying to shit on their ex. They st they still thinking about how they gonna flex on their ex. Wow, that is something. like I'm gonna flex on my ex. Like like at the end of the day, I'm gonna get on there and flex on my ex. Fuck her. They looking at their page all the time. You got people that just stalk people pages and be like, yeah, I'm gonna shit on this motherfucker. Watch. Mm, uh, I can't so wait so I everything up. successful they got is more like, hi, look at me. You see me now. Like, look, right. I'm yeah, shining. Because, yeah, now what? Right, people, yeah, listen. bitch, you left me because you was unhappy. But now look at me, bitch. Now <laughs> because it's listen. like okay, she she left you because she was unhappy. Because some people, and, and, and just because you got a new car and you got some money, that don't mean that's gonna make her happy. Yeah, because yeah. you got some people out here, right? They just naturally, at the end of the day, some people naturally got that thing. They got that star quality, and they naturally the shit. I'm talking about you could you could go see somebody, man, and they could be, they could be in a rehab, they could be in prison, they could be mm. down, they could be JBM just barely making it, and they just got this ooh, this thing that ooze out of them, whereas though they just. They supposed to be somewhere else, and you see it in them. You see it in their confidence, their attitude, no, where, no matter where they at in life, they just got this glow about them. They just glowing, and they always able to take shit to the next level. So you'll be sitting there, and you'll be like, damn. And then you had a person that they never had that. Mm -hmm. They're not sure about themselves. So they leave with things. They try to, they try to uh, you know, uh, everything is about grabbing attention from grabbing things, not from who they are, because they really scared. Like yeah. a lot of people, you got to stand, a lot of people is hiding. And when I say hiding is, a lot of people throw that, throw, throw, how can I say? They try to deflect shit off of them or who they really are because they thinking you see them a lot of times. Mm -hmm. They think like, damn, you can see you can see that they don't feel good about themselves. You can see that they insecure or you can see that they think they ugly and all this other stuff. And it's like, yo, it ain't even that deep. Like, because mm -hmm. we'll be overthinking ourselves and how we feel about ourselves, no matter what, we wear that shit on our sleeves so people yeah. can see it because you wear it because it's your energy, your approach to life. The, uh, the way you speak about things, the way you speak about others, because a lot of times when you see people that's always speaking bad about people, like you got people in your, you got people, we all know people probably in our life that through their whole life, friendships always go wrong. They never get along with people. It's always somebody else's problem. Them, them people that's always somebody else's problem, you got to understand, man, they got some shit going on in life that nobody, nothing could, Nothing, no position, nothing, nothing, nothing could change. No clothes, right. no money, no jewelry. That's right. just who they are. It's within them. Yeah. And a lot of times when motherfuckers, like he said, when success comes, if you was a greaseball, if you was just a, a hateful person, that success going to amplify the shit. Because right. now you're like, yeah, fuck everybody. Right. Yeah. You know how many people with money that's rich? Yeah. You know how many people with money that's miserable? I mean, yeah, that was crazy. That's just, you know, <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, 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 that's that crazy. Was, that was I mean, funny. I mean, you, you you know how many people with money that's just miserable as shit, yeah. right? And because everybody think that it's going to ease and, all your and problems. You would think because they got money that they not miserable. No, money going to pay your bills. Money right. going to pay your bills and give you access to a certain life or whatever. And resources, but it's not. Yeah. It's, it ain't got nothing to do with what you going on inside of you. Right. They money say, don't change what's inside. But it's funny. It's like they say money is like alcohol. It just brings out who you are. It makes you more yourself. Right. So if somebody like if they get successful and they like they start acting crazy and like oh now every they got a problem with everybody everybody got a problem with me I'm you're like man that's who you were you were right. a paranoid insecure person to begin with yeah right so, right so it's all about keeping balance man and not letting success go to your head and failure go to your heart because a lot of people they fail and. They weren't about all the shit that don't matter. Yep. How this person still looking at me, how this person judging me, what they think about me, man. I, man, none of that shit don't matter. Nope. They'll lose all if, they, if, they'll get embarrassed and they'll lose their courage right. to be able to and start try again. And, and and I'm gonna tell you like this, man, if you show me ten successful businessmen, I'm gonna show you ten businessmen that failed at something in life. Mm -hmm. But they bounce back game was notorious and glorious because they didn't lay down when they failed. Yep. When they failed, when they hit that speed bump, they hit that pothole, they got that flat tire. All they did was change the tire and keep on fucking moving. That's what life is about. Life is about keeping it moving, keeping it moving, progressing. You feel me? Any Anybody that come up with great ideas, your idea is not always going to work. But it only need you only need that one idea to work. You only need that one idea to work to change your life. You feel what I'm saying? And, and So... Just keep the balance, man. Never get too high on a win. Never get too low on a loss. That's what it's all about. It's about keeping balance. Prime example, we signed a bar stool. Wallo got the most money he ever had in his life. But he still rock Adidas sweatpants every day. He ain't go out and say, oh, I'm about to go buy Versace shit. And he could afford it. 
He can afford it. He ain't say, I'm about to go buy Versace shit. I'm about to get a 10 Lamborghini. pairs of Lamborghini. I'm about to get 10 pairs of Da Vinci sneakers. I ain't, I'm ain't. i about to get all types of goddamn uh, uh, Balenciaga sweaters. And No, he's still the same person because he re- he's able to maintain his balance. That shit balance. don't make me a break me. I just want to wake up every day, have a good meal. I'm happy to be free. Right. That's it. All that other shit, that shit don't make right. nothing to me, man. So, so. And a side note, it's Givenchy. It rhymes with raunchy, like oh, Givenchy. Givenchy? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Givenchy. I got a couple <laughs> pairs of Givenchy sneaks, but <laughs> Givenchy, Givenchy, I guess. You know, <laughs> I guess it's, uh, so is is it uh, Louis Vuitton or is it Louis Vuitton? It's Louis Vuitton. Because oh, I it heard is. Kanye say Louis before. Mm, maybe he know him on a first name basis. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, deep. Like, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, deep. Let's get into a million dollars worth of game. Before we get into a million dollars worth of game, a million dollars is worth of game is brought to you by our sponsor, Raycon, Raycon Earbuds. Listen, one thing about Raycon Earbuds is like this, listen. Very affordable. They're very affordable. They have for the price right here. Listen, first of all, look at the casing they come in. Mm. The easy casing, mm. right? It's nice, you put them mm. in your ear, wham. Mm. I love the way they fit in the ears. Boop. All the other headphones so be right falling out. You see them, listen, come mm. in this, Listen, as soon as you put them in and say pairing mode, mm. the lady pairing be like, mode. pairing mode, go mm-hmm. right in your ears. You can zoom out, you know what I mean? I'm talking about that they have the price of all the premium, all the other premium wireless earbuds. You know what I mean? That's, I'm saying it's, it's a great investment, though. And the one thing about it, I'm talking about the Raycon E25 earbuds, six hours. Six hours of play. Like, you got six hours. You can just, like, you're not going to oh, be going too much. You, like, what you going to be doing for six hours? That's what's yeah, that's so great legendary. about it. You go work out. You ain't going to work out that long. I'm talking about something that's like, they, they, they're so comfortable. They perfect for conference mm-hmm. calls or Oh, you know what I mean? Even like sometimes, you know, I mean, podcasts, all type, you can do whatever you want to do. When you can connect them to your, to your whole thing, it's like, they everything, man. And like, you heard me talk about the company, you know what I mean, which was co-founded, co-founded by Ray J. Shout out to Ray J. Shout out to Ray J. I used J. to watch a lot of his shows when I was in the oh, joint. No. He, he, he hit it first. Yeah, listen, he had some of the, the greats, you know what I mean? It was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Cardi B, mm. uh, Brandy, mm. R.J. Smith, mm. you know what I mean? Damn, I need to be on there. Uh, and it's like they are they are obsessed with Ray with Raycon. I'm all them people I name, they obsessed with. They are obsessed. They are obsessed for Raycon. Did I say that word right? Obsessed. Uh, obsessed. Obsessed or assess. Obsess. You know, sometimes I be pronouncing pronouncing stuff crazy, but it's cool. Don't mind me. But listen, what I want you to do is what you need to do right now. Listen, man, get 15% off at buyraycon.com. Dot com. I mean, backslash game for fifteen percent off. Raycon, Raycon, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know how I be pronouncing stuff wrong. Mm-hmm. You always say, like I say, shrimp. Mm-hmm. Now I'm saying it right, shrimp, shrimp. I say it right. No shrimp, 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 shrimp. See, it, 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 just get your Raycon headphones, man. Go to Raycon. What is it? Dot com backslash Raycon. game. Raycon, Raycon. Raycon. I be saying anything. Raycon. Uh-huh. I mean. <laughs> you, you love it, don't you? You you love always getting on me about that when I go. We go together. I mean, because you can't speak, man. But it's cool. They get the point. But you know, don't even pay him no attention. Tangle and twist Raycon. Like an pre- pre- Buy Raycon. Dot com backslash game and get fifteen percent off. Believe that. Let's get into what a million dollars worth of game, right? I just want to tell all the youngins out here, right? Your relationships is everything. Whatever you trying to do in life, relationships is everything, man. Understand that. So even in even in just regular life, oh yo, hey bro, how you got that job? Oh no, my aunt, my aunt had worked down there at the, so she got me in. No, my cousin that knew some boy, and he got me in. Relationships is everything, everything in life, man. And you got a lot of people out here that don't value relationships. You you can meet a you can meet a, a a million dollar relationship, and just because he don't do what you want him to do in a in a when timely, you want him to do when it. you want him to do it in a timely manner, then niggas get to talking, they get to running their mouth, and then you know how many times this has happened, where a motherfucker got a perfect relationship that can take him out of here that can take him out of here, but they don't understand that God got him. See, that's the one thing you got to understand. God got you, not him. 
if he do something for you, that's because God put it on his heart mm -hmm. to do that for you. And they be having million dollar relationships. Sometimes God put the people in your life too. Right. Yeah. For you to there, you can fuck it up yourself. Right. And they can have a million dollar relationship right here. And all, all you gotta do, all it's gonna do is take some time sometimes, but they patience don't allow them to, to let the whole race play out. And a lot of niggas trip right before the finish line, fall, scrape their chin up, three other niggas pass the finish line before them, they don't get a gold, silver, or bronze. Mm. There's so many people out here that fuck up million dollar relationships for two dollar conversation. Running a fucking mouth about nothing. Getting in their feelings about nothing. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, when you understand that don't nobody owe you shit out here, that's what you got to understand first. God got you and don't nobody owe you shit. Whatever he did to become a million dollar uh, relationship, he put that work in for. He, you got to sometimes you got to prove to the nigga that could open the door for you. That you worth opening the fucking door because for. you know how Hello. to get through. You, you gonna put the work in to get through that door, and you gotta understand something that's very important. When you a move maker and a shaker, you always gonna have you always gonna have people, right? You always you, you always gonna have people that. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey, what is you doing, buddy? It's okay. Hey, buddy. Oh, come on, man. He's not gonna bite you. No, no but uh, you know, he's a mutt. Hey, buddy. Come here, buddy. Look, we got hey, the buddy. yeah, we got we oh. got interrupted by the by the uh by the dog. Don't worry about it. I'm kick popping his ass so as we get me. off camera. Dogs love me. But, but 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 my whole thing is like this. You gotta understand. A lot of times, this you gotta understand. A lot of times it's like this. That relationship with that with that how can I say? With that person, when you a big. This is why it's so easy. Everybody is trying to jockey for position. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell people this. There's no such thing as a secret because everybody Oof. that you tell a secret got somebody that they tell a secret. Yep. And they're going to tell somebody that they tell a secret. Mm -hmm. And the secret is no, is no such thing as secrets. Right. So when you hate or when you say some shit that's on some goofy shit about somebody or about whatever, mm -hmm. you got to know, you got to understand something that's very important. What's very important is that it's not a secret. And it's going to get back to him. So be mindful who you speak about. Be, matter of fact, don't even be mindful who you speak about. Don't say shit. Yeah. Don't even say nothing. We'll do, it's not going to help you. You think venting out to somebody that's speaking bad about somebody that's in position that you think, oh, you, that shit ain't going to help you. Mm -mm. So the bottom line is just like, listen, just focus, put your grind down and keep going. Make it happen like that. Right. And understand that this, man, and life, man, 30% of life is about what you know, man. And the other 70% of life is about who you know. Absolutely. I'm going to say this one more time. Wallow went and met with Wack 100. He was in town. Wallow went and kicked it with him. They was just busting it up. He said, man, I see y'all got the podcast, man. That shit crazy, man. Blah, 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 blah. Wallow like, yeah, we in a mister. Shout you out know, to Wack for that. Shout out to Wack 100 because Wack is a person that share information. You feel what I'm saying? Shout out to Charlemagne. The God, he's a person that shares information. Dude. Solid, Solid dude. dude. You feel what I'm saying? You, you get some people in your life who understand that uh, I don't want it all. And they see they see if that you got a talent, they see that you capable of upgrading your brand and they pass the connects off mm -hmm. to you. Or they give you information that you need. To, because prime example, while I'm talking to Wack, I had some things I had to handle. So Wack says, Man, y'all, y'all, y'all heavy with the podcast shit, man. Yeah, we about to take this shit to the different level. We talking to such and such, 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 such. Wax say, why y'all ain't talking to Spotify? Gilly brother over at Spotify Shaka, running shit. Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu. We had no idea Shaka Zulu was over at Spotify. You feel what I'm saying? So we like, what? For real? Oh, one phone call. Shock pick right up. Now he said we, I already was on it. I already was on it. He was like, I already was on it. I was, I was already on it. I was going to call y'all. So... In life, and granted, we didn't end up signing with Spotify, but there was another door that opened us up. And when we didn't sign with Spotify, that's because that's what we chose not to do. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's like, in, in your relationships, man, if 
we didn't have a relationship with Wack, we would have never found that out. If 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 we didn't have a relationship with other people, we might have not never made it to bar stool. It relationships is everything. And stay away from people that always fucking relationships up. Mm-hmm. Because you, you if they into that and you fucking with them, people gonna look at you the same. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? This Absolutely. But I'm telling you. <laughs> Ab- now, it's a difference between fucking relationships up and standing on something that you believe in and something that you value. Don't never, don't never disregard your yeah, beliefs yeah, yeah, and definitely. your yeah. value for for just because a motherfucker's in position and could do something for you. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not gonna never compromise my beliefs and my values and my worth for no fucking body. And because at the end of the day, I understand. God got me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not not you, nigga. God got me. It, and if it was something that you didn't want to do for me and God wanted you to do it, you're going to do it, nigga. Yep. And if not, it's th- going to bring someone else in the picture who's going to do exactly what you need. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So always remember, man, relationships is one of the most important things in life and just in general to being successful, to being happy. You feel what I'm saying? You know, all of those things. Relationships is extremely important, man. Let's get into uh, our next sponsor. Express VPN. Where is it at, man? Hold on for a second. Okay, let's get it. This million dollars worth of game is sponsored by Express VPN. You being stuck at home these days, you probably don't think much about internet privacy on your own home network. You fire up the incognito mode, your browser, and no one can see what you're doing, right? No, you're wrong. ExpressVPN makes sure your ISP, which is your internet service provider, can see what sites you visited. Instead, your internet connection is rerouted through ExpressVPN secure service so nobody sees none of your information. Each ExpressVPN server has an IP address that it shares among thousands of users. That means everything that you do cannot be traced. So ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your data with best in class encryptions. So your information is always protected. And that's important. You don't want your information out there in the world. You always want to protect what's your best interest and your value and your information. ExpressVPN is the fastest and most trusted VPN on the market. Is rated number one by CNET, Wired, and The Verge of countless more. So protect your online activity today with ExpressVPN. You know what I'm saying? Visit um, the special link, expressvpn.com backslash millions, and you can get an extra three months free on your one-year package. You hear me? So uh, join today, expressvpn.com backslash millions, and you get a a free three months on your one year package. That's expressvpn.com backslash millions. ExpressVPN. It hides all your information. Oh, you creeper. You want to do I, whatever. I mean, you can do whatever. I, I think I might got to get that. You might got to get ExpressVPN. <laughs> yeah. It hides all your information. Yeah. Okay, let's get into um. what's the top five sports wear in hip hop? The baseball cap. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say, number one by far, I believe, is the Yankees hat. Absolutely. I think that's num- I think number one top sportswear in hip hop of all time, and I gotta give Jay Z that credit. I think no, hold up, hold I up. think Jay Z made up, the up. Yankee hat. What about the Chicago White Sox hat? They was wearing that since back in the day. NWA, all like. So- but I mean, if that's the case, and like the Raiders had um, LA Kings, because M- yeah, NWA, they, NWA, if like everything's if it's like black colorway, yeah, they was Ooh. wearing that. Yeah, he was wearing all that shit. I think Jay Z might have superseded the the like that that navy blue people, Yankee hat. You had people wearing the Detroit Detroit hat. You know what I mean? So you got you got. I that. know I, I know the Yankees Doughboy. hat is in there. The Yankees I know, hat is in there. Uh, the L.A. Dodgers is in there. Jordans. Absolutely. Oh, you talking about just all the sportswear? Yeah. Oh yeah, so the Jordans top sportswear in hip hop. Well, the Jordan's Yankees like had. the first, like when when basketball sneakers really started getting wear worn on the street. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so so you gonna say the Yankees had Jordans? Um, Definitely throwback jerseys, like since like what Fife Dog from Tribe and um, Big Boy from Outkast. You had jerseys, period. It was jerseys, like period. Right. Jerseys, period. You had people wearing all type of from 
football, baseball, hockey. Yeah, hockey it was wearing, They was wearing all type of stuff. And they still wearing them to this day. They still wear them. They don't wear them as much, but they still yeah. wearing them. I just seen Leaf Ward in his video. He had a, he had the hockey jersey on. All right, the, but listen, I'm going to say this. You can say jerseys, right? Mm-hmm. Which is all kind. But it's like, it's certain things. Like if you say the Yankees hat, you can say jerseys. LA Dodgers hat. It's a, it's a lot, you know what I mean? Because you know, you have. I say from a West Coast standpoint, Chucks. Mm, yeah. And Chucks used to be basketball sneaks. But yeah, definitely, Chucks. that's like part of the uniform. Chucks, I, is I, the uniform. Chucks are, nigga, you used to wear Chucks religiously. I still got some in the cut. Every day, damn near. I back play in basketball the day. on the Chucks. Well, you know if that's I mean? the case, then sportswear, wouldn't Vans be considered sportswear for like skating? I don't think no, Vans. Vans not, yeah, yeah, not so much? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think Vans like, is in talking a, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about since like, back though, in the day. Up until like now, I definitely got to put that Phillies hat in there. In the top five? Yes. That Phillies P? Niggas, you crazy? Yes. That Phil, everybody that rocked that no, Phillies P. No, they P. didn't. They rocked. Listen. Yes, they oh, did. Oh, 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 Maybe listen, 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 listen to what I said. I said, listen, I said the White Sox hat. That, that's and in I, there. That's way, listen, the White Sox hat. No, but, 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 but before the White Sox hat, the Raiders hat. All right, so the, so, so you so you going to say the, the Yankees, Yankees hat. L.A. Dodgers. That's major. Mm-hmm. L.A. Dodgers is major. It is. So that you blue, listen, that Nipsey that, blue. Listen, that Chicago White Sox hat. Uh, Atlanta Braves hat. Oh, yeah. Oh, Atlanta that Braves, egg. Houston Astros. Yeah. Uh, no, before the Houston Astros, I think I think the Oakland Athletics was more, you know what I mean, the, the Oakland A hat. I don't know. I, I, so? I remember the Oakland A hat, but it was green. I don't think everybody was rocking. Everybody was rocking that Black Raiders hat. Everybody was rocking that, 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 uh, that Blue Yankees hat. You know what I'm saying? The White Sox, Chicago White Sox, Chicago, yeah. jerseys, because jerseys has always been big. Yeah, you you know, be representing big. you know whoever popping in the sports world because it's almost like music. oh, don't forget ball it's, shorts. It's almost like music. Oh, yeah, that's it, part of the jersey. It's like music and 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 sports. And, and sports just is is yeah, it's hand in hand with each other. You feel what I'm saying? It's like it's just and it's like what represents where you from like like the New York right. hat got the NY right. LA hat got the LA and right. a lock in right. so it, it was not, like they could represent it, not, it, seemed like, it seemed like the jerseys is coming back they are oh, yeah. they coming back strong now you know what I mean me and Gil got a, got, a, got a bunch of them already you know what I mean mm-hmm. but it's like it just seemed like the jerseys is coming back like hard like to where it's though it's going ready to be it's ready to be crazy yeah because they like got the colorways they, people want so what they like whole I think the number sneakers. one I think the number one sports gear of all time in hip hop is the Yankees hat. And I say that because I say Jay Z probably is the biggest artist. Right? He made that Yankees hat popular, man. That is true. I'm, I'm going to keep it all the way around. I bought one. And I'm yeah. from Philly. I had a Yankees hat. You, what, what part of New York you thought you was from when you were I didn't think I never thought I was you know from that no thing, part You thought of you was from Brooklyn. You think no, yeah, Brooklyn, Get out of here. Fuck out of here. Baby, baby. So I, I did like, I did like they cat. slangs, though. Don like Quan, Rug. Everybody from Brooklyn, yeah, fat. The whole man. You know, shout out to Brooklyn. Yeah, the but, um, Starter Jack is back in the day, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Starter Jack. But the young cats, they probably don't understand. They was like shiny. And they had the team logo on there. Yeah. They, whatever your team was, you had them. Yeah, they was. They definitely was yeah, that. Yeah, when they had a team colors. And, team color, all and it was certain colors. teams you only wanted for the colors. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, and I seen something where ASAP Rocky said he made Air Force Ones famous. And Nelly really had a problem with that. But even but even if we keep it real, they was popular before Nelly and um, did a song about but, him. But, but, but they blew them but up. But when Nelly did it, they went up 400%. Shout out to Nelly because nobody did. even thought about doing a song like that. You had... It, it's only, it's only, it was only a couple songs, hip hop sneaker songs. You had My Adidas by Run DMC, right? Mm-hmm. You had Nelly had a joint, and then what's the name had a jam. But but it was more like he, he had a song called uh, Lil Scrappy had a song called Forever I Love Atlanta, basically Felas. Uh, and then what's the name had a song called Adidas, All Day I Dream. But it was really about dream All about Day sex. I mm-hmm. Dream About Sex. I think it was Killer Mike and uh, Big Boy or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was like. It, it now just, that is true because it, it's like once they did the song then it was like whether you had some forces or not you had to get some a- a1s you but had at, to at a point everybody. in time the designer shit started taking the sports shit out yeah you know what i'm saying but i think with the new generation they 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 wasn't really with so much rocking the jerseys and you know like we was in our generation i think it was more about the big sneaks and you know this generation, you know the, the Gucci scarves. We do it go next though. We do it go next because I'm not saying everybody, but financially, shit is going to change in a minute. 
So mm-hmm. where do we do go? I think, I think, I think that's why I keep saying I think it's gonna go back to the jersey because the jersey is, is simplistic. You gotta understand, dudes is walking around in a rap game and we never seen that. Rap game used to be like you could wear whatever you could wear. Right. Person has some baggy jeans on, some army, some uh, army fatigue pants on, some regular ball sneaks on, a regular shirt or something yeah. like. It was just so regular. Now it's like you, you know, to be a rapper. Like, hold up, do uniform really matter? Do the uniform matter? Yeah, I think, I think the uniform Because it's a part of you got, your, you your be, vibe, your look. Do it matter? I'm talking about that high designer shit and all that. Do, it, do, do the way you rap matter the style of clothes you wear? Like, like if, if you're not rapping about, the, if you're not rapping about a bunch of money, a bunch of shit, can you just rock regular? Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, so yeah. The regular see, because it's all about an image. You feel it's all about the image that you're putting out there. You feel what I'm saying? Some people don't have no image. Some people is like, I'm just me. You feel what I'm saying? And then some people got, like the Migos, they cannot just be wearing some regular shit. Yeah. Because, like a little baby and all right, that. Right, like they, they, because they talk about, the, and that's like a part of who they are in their songs. They talk about, you know, the designer shit. Yeah. You know, they talk about being fly. They talk about having the best cars. They talk about having the brightest ice. They talk about, so they got to have that uniform. But it yeah. seemed like to me. Whereas it, Talib Kweli didn't have to have that yeah. uniform. Or, or Common Kendrick, sense Kendrick, 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 Kendrick Lamar, Lamar don't have to. J. Yeah, Cole like, don't have the to. The biggest rappers yeah. of all time, like some of the biggest and the greatest known rappers from the NWAs to the Kendrick Lamars. A lot of rappers, it seemed like some of the biggest ones, the Dr. Dre's, the 50 Cent's. All them dudes that came to Eminem's, they didn't wear that shit. Right. But, but, then, like the big, but, but then you look at the big ones like the Jay-Z, when he was always everything with Iceberg and Biggie, cooled you down to the socks. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's, it could be a whole, like they, they're like, they were rapping about their lifestyle. So. Right. It was Tupac, See, Biggie, Tupac, Biggie had to. You Tupac know what I mean? Even, Black and ugly, however, I stay mixing. He was talking shit. He was talking that shit. That but Tupac, look at Tupac. Mm-hmm. Tupac had some regular shit on. Yeah, because he Tupac did. was a uh, had a, a warrior's mentality. Yeah. I don't really give a fuck about that. I'm, yeah, he's I'm from West Coast. Right. West Coast. West oh, he's Coast not from people. West Coast. He's from Brooklyn. But I'm just saying. Yeah. He, 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 oh, he's he, from New York. I don't know what part New York, he was Baltimore. He's able to do his thing over there. But I'm going to say this. like West Coast rappers, them motherfuckers snooping them was at the top of the game wearing Chucks and fucking Dickies. Right? Real talk. Real talk. But then, but then snooping them also had a gangster that was they thing. Yeah. The gangsters. And, yeah. and, and, and you know and you know what it is. Let me ask you something. I'm going to ask both of y'all this question. Why is it that when it comes to a black designer, a lot of times our stuff is not, by us is looked down upon and it's not highlighted like we highlight the European designers. Like, you know what I mean? Think about it. You had people that, you had whole teams that kill shit like No Limit. Yeah. They kill shit with FUBU on. Right. Yeah. Dude, they wasn't playing. They supported FUBU like crazy, which was a I, great thing. But we don't support, like black people don't support black brands, black fashion brands. They look at them like, oh, that's just some, you know, because they classify the streetwear to the point, but they don't, but when we get classified as streetwear, it's not classified as the, like, the superior streetwear, yeah, like that Supreme luxury. and all that. Yeah. Any, like, you're not going to see too many black designers who get, you know, Virgil Abloh, he went to go design for a big fashion house. Yeah. But you're not But I mean, see, Off-White is his company. Yeah, I understand. And that's still company. seen as, you know what yeah, I mean? That's his company. Fear of God, Jerry yeah. Lorenzo's company. But, but you're not still. But I know what you mean, though. The average person, you people look down, I'm like, ah, they not really, they, they rather wear, and, and when, even wear the streetwear thing, you got companies like Supreme and all of them, and it's like, yeah, I wear that, but I ain't gonna wear the streetwear from down the dude that do, do, do the gear at Harlem, the, the sure. girl that do the stuff in North Philly. My man that hooked stuff up in Bankhead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We gotta start. Well, I think I think I think hip hop, the culture, they gotta really start powering the culture. Yeah. Well, you know, you got that, a lot of people that wear Milano. Yeah, you got a lot very of people. You got, very yes, true. Yes, yes, you, you right about you that. Got a lot of people that wear Milano. But, it's but, all about but you know how you what? it's all about how you walk your brand out. Yeah. She walk her brand out like it's classy. Yeah. Like 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 it like it's doing something. Same thing with Lavello. Right, same thing with Lavello. Like, oh, uh-huh. all, so it's people that support them. Yeah. But it's, but you gotta have your shit together. Yeah, but I feel Paranoid. you as far as in those price points. People will they worship Fendi and everything. Where it could be a T-shirt, and they're like, "I'm I'm gonna get that." And you're like, "Well, what makes this more, better than this?" I, mean, I did. I t- and I just, it's all about like trying to wear wear your wealth. You know what I mean? Just like, mm-hmm. oh well, people might if they're not from not just Philly because a lot of everybody knows Milano, right? But they say if I go overseas, people might not know this Milano T-shirt. Oh, but they know this Gucci, and they know how much it costs. And they, I think it's like sometimes as black people you paying for you paying for a movement right yeah because like damon john i had damon john one time we was in the car and he did a video for somebody and he was just telling everybody like yo we get all our garments from the same place it's just different movements absolutely 
We take the tag. Absolutely. Sew our tags in. Sometimes we get to be ordering from the place tag list. Yeah. Because I, I ain't going to front. I remember one time it, it was like a champion hoodie and I put it right up next. I'm talking about a dick quality champion hoodie. I put it right next to the Gucci hoodie and it was the exact same hoodie. Yep. The exact same feel. The exact, and when you turn it inside out, people didn't know the difference. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what I'm saying is like a lot of times we got to empower like a lot of times we always talking about oh we ain't got this we ain't got that we ain't got that it ain't that we ain't got the money to spend on certain shit it's that our choice when it comes to spending yes so a lot of times we got to just look at these these like you could really feel like if an artist where somebody because me i'm gonna say i'm guilty of it i'm the one that wore i'm talking about, i probably wore over 100 different people clothing mm-hmm. and my videos tagged them all that type so, on a strength i'm talking about different times because i understand the power of if an artist take a local person and they wear their stuff one time and tag them or put that could change their whole it fucking could change life. Their, a, a co-sign from a really big notable person could change somebody's career and right. i ch- and i challenge all artists out there right recording artists find somebody in your city your town throw their stuff on and tag them right yeah. because a lot of a lot of a, a lot of a lot of a lot of people is looking at you and just that one, just one time i ain't saying you got to keep doing it but find somebody that you see that really need to help you know what I'm saying? And make sure, like, make sure when you send somebody your stuff that you can you can handle the demand if it jump off. Because yeah. a lot of times I don't post stuff with people. But then, hit. but wait, here's the thing, though. There's a the thing of like limited, like limited, limited editions, edition. yeah, right. where people it's like little limited amounts that, like, if you can't get it, then it turns into this whole other, you know, resale market. Because most things are only hot because we agree that they are right? right so it's time for us to start agreeing about our entrepreneurs and our labels especially when we see designers copying bigger designers copying oh, they, they, they work all the time day. absolutely they all still, the time you'll see some shit that you like like you got people that I, I really believe you got people that be in the streets of new york that be in the streets of the phillies the la the atlanta the houston's the chicago's detroit's all these towns right mm-hmm. and they just be peeping yep. peeping swag and they go these people go design stuff and then you be like hold up they got it on the runway. I just seen that down uh, Harlem. Yep. Right. I just seen somebody in Harlem that, yep. that, that dressed like or, this. They took, or that, even, they took that person's whole style and created a line off yep. that shit. Or even right. fast fashion. There's a lot of local designers. Um, I saw like Brittany DeShields. She had yeah. a dress. Like two mm-hmm. weeks later, fashion overhead it. Yeah. They like straight will just rip the design. So it's, yeah. just, it's just time for us to agree that like our designers are just as... I guess like this is not even just as good because it's not even that it's just just as valuable to us right. as you know what I mean that's why people slept on Dapper Dan and now it's like this big movement because Gucci gave him a cosign right or Gucci mm. said let's mend it but it's like did we he really need it. yeah did we really right. need them to finally right. we say all, listen we always look for this is what we always look for we always look for a cosign out the culture for us to listen to and say they the shit mm. what we got to start doing is we got to jump on shit before everybody else outside the culture or somebody big in the culture says this shit yeah. if you feel it jump on that shit right. yeah. like if you feel it rock it wear that shit right. you see what i'm saying like and, and uh show some support because you don't know i didn't I, it, was a, it was it was it's, it's, brother sent me a shirt one time mm-hmm. called and gil gil know this yeah. mm-hmm. called the streets don't love you. the streets don't love you so i never forget this conversation i had with this brother i wore it on the corner and i was talking about it he hit me in the dm is like it's like can i can I can I talk to you? I called him, man. The brother was on. He from down Tampa, Florida. The brother was basically crying because he was like, "Yo, shit was tight, bro. I ain't even had. I was trying to figure out things for me and my son, my kids, and boom, 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 bang. I was trying to figure it out. That shit changed his like this dude. Now I see his shirts everywhere. Wow. Right? And I was so happy that I was a part of, you know, Changing igniting ign- igniting his fire, right. the fire, and you know his whole brand and be able to. Because he said, "I only got a couple shirts, man. I'm gonna print some more. Right. I'm gonna send you some more. Can you wear some more?" I said, "Yeah." Cause you get Gil, I said, yeah, man. And then he just was send some. I got some for Freeway. I get free the shirts I get, and then I just start seeing all athletes, rappers. I'm like, yo, man. And I feel good every right. time I see him come down my timeline because I know all I did was just wear it, man, right. and do a video. And everybody's like, I want that shirt. The streets don't love you, and it was like, that's so that's it ain't dope shit. it ain't it ain't hard, man, and it's dope. Yeah. So let's get into stories from the cell. Stories from the cell. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 one thing about stories from the cell is like, much thing, hold on, I'm gonna say that again. Stories from the cell. One thing about stories from the cell is, I'm gonna tell you some moments, right? And I try to tell people m- about my journey. Everybody else's journey is different because everybody see life differently, but I, I'm just real transparent and emotional about it. Uh, I remember doing some real stuff the first time I cried when I was in a cell, right? Mm. And it was like, i never forget. When you, you know, found out your woman was getting dicked down? No, it wasn't that. Oh, what? It was just, it was, it was crying because it was like, I finally made it to the big house. 
I was in, you know, greatest four and it's, you know, in the juvenile for juveniles and we're not really juvenile side. It was really in a, uh, what you call it? Uh, oh no, let me, it was like protective custody cause I was underage mm-hmm. and I went to the penitentiary and they can't put you out in the population with everybody else cause you, you're not 18 yet. Yeah. I had a celly in there and it was the middle of the night, man. And I, you know, I just was like, I held the pillow to my face and I was crying cause it was like, damn. This is gonna be a long journey, and I got myself in some shit, and I'm like, damn, I ain't know it was gonna be like that, and it was painful because you couldn't do nothing about it. Mm-hmm. It was like they already sentenced you, you can't come back, and it's just like, I, I, and I had the moments most a lot of times doing my bit because it because it was like a release, it was release of pain, it was release of, damn, I got this much more time to go. Damn, you felt better after you cried. Fuck yeah, I felt better. Mm-hmm. It was like a release, you know, you splash your face with water, but it was like you had to let it out because you be holding this pain because. You know, when you go to jail and you come down after you get that time in the courtroom, you got to be tough. You got a whole face. You got to tell everybody, man, that shit ain't about nothing. I could do that. Yeah. Because we come from a tough environment and that shit be like, you be so, you, 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 you be so detached from the reality and you be detached from the way you feel and your emotions to the point where it's though, it be like, man, fuck it. But it be like them times where you just can't front no more yeah. and you got to release all this, this front you put up. It's like releasing the front. Uh-huh. Releasing all the because every time them blows hit you and they said and they was like oh man uh, they said gave you the time or something went wrong you be like man that shit ain't about nothing you keep talking about it ain't about nothing like you just you know because I, I felt as though I was a time machine yeah because I've been doing time my whole life so it'd be it, but it'd be like damn it just be like damn man I let that shit go on myself sometime in the middle of the night and uh, you know it's it's, it's a joint I heard read uh, I think it's a book called Men Cry in the Dark mm. that shit real that shit real and it's but at the same time, it was soothing, and it was just a release, and it would, it would refresh my whole battery, and I'd be able to start for the blows I had to take coming from the different letdowns in life. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that, that comes apart with incarceration. Mm-hmm. But I. But what it else was, been doing the dark? What? Oh, I, I don't know what you doing. Oh, no, I'm just asking you. What did you do in the dark? What you was up? What you was up to jail? Oh uh, uh, no, I ain't do nothing in the dark. Well, don't ask me nothing about the yeah, no dark. Because you, you just it was a deep. Men do things in the dark. It was deep. No, man, I just want to share that with y'all, it was man. It's really deep. deep. Hey, listen, yeah, I was locked up too. I ain't gonna lie. I was only locked up for ten days though, and I cried. My woman was locked up across the street. Two was locked up right across the street. Did somebody try you when you was in the joint. Like, look at you. Oh, like, stop fucking playing with me, man. No, why you gotta be so tough? Like nobody would try you. What you did, what you would have done? You're like they, they might not have been would, successful, but did they try? It, what would you do if somebody tried you? How would you handle it? If I came and said, hey, how you doing, man? What's going on, bro? How you be? And I just was in there like, you know what I mean? Sizing you up. Yeah, man. Oh, this dude ain't that strong. I can <laughs> this nigga down. Like, what would you do if somebody done that? Like, how would you feel, though? If I'd somebody have played it off, then I'd have stabbed the shit out you. So you would have walked in the cell with somebody and be like, all right. Be like, yo, can I holler at you, man? Let me talk yeah, to you. Yeah, say, you hungry? Yeah, hold on. Let me run to my cell real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> She would have, so would you went to the cell because it would have been the booby trap in there. You uh, no, went man, in the cell. I'd have, I'd have, I'd have walked right in there. Yeah, okay. First of all, <laughs> fuck is you touching me for, man? <laughs> It'd be like, you That's what me. I'd have been. You, you cool? You just what, came through. I got you touching me? See? That's, that's what it got you stabbed right there. What you touching me for, man? <laughs> so you stabbed me, right, you stab me right here on the block? I'd have, I'd have been like, hold on, let me go to my cell. I'm going to meet you back at your cell. You, you want, yeah, I see what you, you think I'm a chicken tender, huh? Spicy drink, huh? Okay. I'll be right down. Yeah, knife in your back. For all this. What's no, up? but what if I tell you to go in first? Because you sizing me up. What's up, dog? Yeah, how you <laughs> doing, man? What the fuck is you doing, man? All this Philly of them, I can tell. That's how they used to do you. No, I'm just doing it to me like that. He know all the things they, they, they like sized him up. He wasn't there 17 years. Like, you're a little thin. <laughs> he wasn't like this. He was thin. He was like, yeah, what you mean? Put you 6'1, 140? You're a little thin, buddy. Hey, look. No, no, Oh, here, Cotty, write this up. Let me, let me teach you something. Come here. Let me show you how to get through your bit. Come here. No, he ain't. He's sitting here crying for something else. Ah, see you Ah, he can't hear you. Got no, but would you go and say, I got you in the cell? butt neck of head. You what's the name? I got a bag for you. Come down to the cell. Yeah, no, I'm not getting no I bags. Got you, man. Come so down. I already got my own joke. conversation. Sizing you up. Fuck is you talking about? They can call you shit. They be like, he tender. Damn. I got a big bag for you. The fuck is you talking about? That's what somebody told you. You was tender? No, I'm just saying. A whole chicken tender, huh? That's what they say to you. You fuck out of here. No nigga ever called me tender, nigga. What kind of word is that to call another grown man? You tender. You tender. What? You. 
You tender. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> the fuck out of shit is that? What was your silly name? The one that snatched you off the top bump there. Anybody oh, never snatched you off. Now you gonna lie. Somebody, you say somebody snatched no, my top bump. What was the crack? What was the crackhead? What was the crackhead no, name? No, who, who, got, me off who, the who, 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 who threatened you in that fucking no, cell no, that so time? You when listen, you man. first came in, on the next, next when, listen, when, we, no, no, no. When the crackhead, no, no. When the crackhead first came in and you was like, listen, it's my rules, and then he's like, all right, cool. But then he got his weight up and then said, come here, nigga, what the fuck is you talking? You was like, oh, oh, hey, who was that? What was his name? You remember? Listen, but on the next episode of Me and I. Was worth a game, man. Oh, no, you just want to pass that off. Huh? You always try to put <laughs> you, you, you just pass that off, huh? It's yeah, already I mean, documented. We could go back. I already and look know, at but that's, that's come on, man. Oh, he snatched him off the joint he and jumped in his he jumper. Woke me up. He just snatched he up the top up. bum he and jumped in his jumper. He woke me up and checked the shit out of me. He definitely but that, did. But I it's cool. And you were scared to death. He had that hawk. He had that Tony Hawk in his hand. I thought everything was on the line. He was ready to slice you and dice. I thought you was You thought your kicks was on the line, huh? I thought everything was on the line. You thought oh he was going to take your innocence? No, I ain't think that. It was and nobody like, ever snatched your innocence in it? No, stop asking me that dumb ass shit. Come on, man. You no. played that off good. <laughs> ain't nobody ever take that from me, <laughs> they man. Took, they they look like your innocence was taken. Hey, listen, man. We appreciate y'all for two today, each and every week to the number one music podcast in the country. I go by the name of Gilly the King. I'm Wallow267. And I'm Amiris John. <laughs> I'm, I'm Amira. It seems corny to say my Instagram no, name it's like not. that. Amiris John. I'm just Amira. If anybody she's single, if anybody wants to be a mirror's John, just DM her and it's just like that. Oh, I right. Uh